Hi, everybody. Hey. Welcome to the Psychic Live. Um, there, now I can see everybody. Um, we're really excited to have Londi Benson today as a guest. And we are waiting for Jackie. She's going to come in late, a little bit later. So, um, hi, Andy. How are you? Good. How are you doing, Debbie? Londi. Um, I'm good. I'm good. Um, so let's do just a little tiny round table. It'll be Andy and then me and then Londi about just like any new news or what's new in the paranormal stuff or with us. So go ahead, Andy. So, um, really the same, the same things that I'm doing is I, I did get all of my images cropped for my tarot deck. So I'll be working on that tonight. Um, and also it's been kind of a challenge though doing the uh, the kindle edition of our book so um i'll be working on that a little bit oh, and i can help you with that you know um I'll, I'll be oh yeah it's just it's just mm -hmm. um, you would think that you could just like put the file in and everything would be squared away but it's yeah. not yeah, yeah. Yeah, it comes out. It can come out really crazy looking. Yeah. Well, I'll talk to you about that later. Certainly, we can look at that. We want to get that done and get that going. Since you talked about the book, it is for sale now, everybody. It's for sale. Mm -hmm. On Amazon.com. I'm sure that Andy put a link up um, to buy yeah. it. And a really neat book. And um, we've Started selling copies right away. We're really excited. Um, it is the little book of big evil, and it is about the darker entities that are out there. And it's full of true stories of people uh, that have, um, you know, seen them and dealt with them. So even Andy and I have our own stories in here. So it's, you know, a really like scary story type of book. So do buy it. And um, well, if you want to send it to us, we'll we'll sign it. <laughs> right. If you want to, that. And, then, and then go and leave feedback for them too. Please on Amazon. Uh, dot com. So we would love that. Um, so Andy, what else is going on? Um, other than that, it's really it just you know doing readings, doing lots of readings, and. Um, I don't know. It's just amazing. It's a good feeling when, you know, on a certain platform, uh, you end up getting a tip. So you know how that is, Debbie. You're like, wow, they really enjoyed the reading uh, because they're tipping you at the end. So I thought that was, you know, that was a good feeling. You so. just got a good tip, I saw. Good yeah. for you. Congratulations. That's really neat. Um yeah, I know that you're doing a, a lot of readings. Um, well, I'll segue to me. Um, lots of readings. And um, also, I'm teaching a class Saturday on magic candles. So I'm Wiccan trained, so I'll be doing that. And then on Sunday, I'm doing um, blessing, well, salt blessing jars doing uh teaching about uh and more and what you can do because we have a full moon coming up on the 27th 28th that night so um this friday on our show i am going to be doing a uh show just about primarily we'll do like half let's do half readings for people and the other half i'm going to use a downward camera and i'm going to show everyone what they can do for the upcoming full moon some of the little spells for money and love and things like that so i've been preparing i have notes everywhere i have to make sure i have all the ingredients i have to go to the store and get some things so it's going to be uh very interesting if any of you are into the pagan the wiccan um things or just using energy or natural things to um charge with the under the full moon i'll tell you all about it on friday so i'm excited to do that so lots of stuff i do have a missing persons case that's wrapping up and i'm using csi lenormand group uh, they're going to be helping along with the people from the dead talk tomorrow night is the spirit circle on psychic fixes meetup 
And if you're in San Diego, you can join it. Some of the best, well, I have the best mediums and psychics in my group, the Dead Talk, and they're going to have, like, we'll call it a seance. They're really, really great, these girls. They'll get, and guys, they will get the names and they'll bring in the spirit and they'll describe them and they'll give messages. And it's quite inexpensive. Alandi, I don't know. What is it, $2 or? Yeah, $2. <laughs> Can you believe it? I just go, yeah, and it's going to be better than most most anything you've ever done you guys if you go because they really do i mean and i'm not going to make it to that one because i'm a little busy i'm gonna wrap this case up but they will pull out your grandma's name and tell her what the cat's name was and where they lived and all kinds of stuff and whatever grandma wants you to know so they're amazing if you if you're down in san diego you should always catch the spirit circles it's a good it's a good time for everybody to hone their skills and, and keep them razor sharp and and so inexpensive for everybody to go. And they'll just, we just ask if you've got um, a picture or a piece of jewelry or something the person owned and just bring it. And that's how I do it. And I just, it's, it just amazes me whenever we do it. And you can just hold it. And then I see here comes grandma and then everything around grandma and what grandma wants you to know. It's just amazing. So that is what's going on um, uh, for me. Um, and so now, uh, Londi, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Really Great. Good. Thank you. Really good. Yeah, yeah. That's Thank good you. to hear. I got feedback yeah. from somebody. <laughs> I, <laughs> so like did. hearing me twice, it's like, oh my gosh, no. Um, I was, as far as what I'm doing, uh, I've spent most of the day talking to people about writing my first book. Oh, wow. wow. That's great. So that'll be kind of fun. Um, I'm trying, I, I think what I'm going to do is, um, in fact, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to write a book about um, how to know if your abilities are true abilities and um, what goes into being a psychic, um, take the fear factor out of it, you know, that that kind of thing. Uh, I want to try to instruct people on where to go online to find out good information. So one of the things I'm going to do is uh, get permission from several of the websites to see about actually including their website in the book itself so that people have some kind of a, a go-to reference that they can just go, oh, I need to find out this and then go to it. It's something I've been wanting to do for a long time, so I think that that's what I'm going to And the other thing that I'm going to do, I've decided I'm going to start doing readings. Now you told me about Bonanza today and I'm thinking I could do that or I could go to the fiber and I'm not sure. We'll discuss that later. But that's what I want to do is uh, get rid of start doing my own readings because people keep asking me and I'm like, oh, it's easier to not charge anybody because then if I'm wrong, <laughs> they don't get mad at me. So Every, Everybody starts out that way, Londi. Yeah. I've been no, reading for a long time. You know, you've been a medium for a long time, but um, we, you know, forever. Everybody. But I just, I've never done it to where anybody had. I felt like I was responsible for somebody. You know, it's like doing it for fun is different than paying to get it done. So I'm like, oh gosh, I don't know. It'll be fun. Oh, oh and, you're, great. you're great. Everybody got to get a reading from her when she comes yeah. out. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That'll be great. I, I hope when I come out of the closet and start being a real psychic, you, mean? <laughs> <laughs> you are a real psychic. I mean, <laughs> um, as far as the other stuff goes, I've been doing some counseling this week, which has been um, um, a real interesting time. And, and um, I've had um, an occasion with one of my friends who is um, has cancer and the friend has um been seeing strange things in her uh, home. And so she's trying to decide exactly what they are. And so she contacted me and she's like, what do you feel? What do you, what's going on? And I'm like, I don't think that there's, you know, she's, I think she's a kind of, um, oh, just like what your thing says, conjured up her own uh, little uh, scrabblies and things. And so I've been trying to counsel her on, on, trying to reduce her fear because fear just feeds into it. It's almost like you're, you're doing a self-fulfilling prophecy whenever you start 
going down that path. Do you find it to be true too, Debbie? I mean, you know, there's a lot of things now. Is she having, she's seen something, right? Yes. Yes. She's been seeing, um, black shadows, something moving really, really quickly in the home. Um, I even went to the, to the effort of saying, well, are you on a uh, specific, she's not on chemo right now, but she is on some medications. And so I'm like, you know, that could also be contributing to it. So you have to kind of decide or differentiate between what is actually internal and what is external, you know? So, um, as far as the medications go, she can look to see if anything uh, would give her a hallucination or not, right. or even the chemo or any radiation. Right. But if she can exclude that, you know, there's still a lot of things that you're looking at as to um, what's going on. Now, she have a history of being sick or is this recent or do, this is there a lot of it? Her for about the last three years, um, I, I think it was about three years ago that she discovered she has cancer and um, um, had to have a partial mastectomy. Um, so she's had a lot of reconstructive surgeries as well as the surgeries for the cancer itself. And she has the cancer back again, unfortunately, for her. And so, but she's not started on a new chemo yet. She's waiting for approvals, which seems so. That's just disgusting to me that they have to wait <laughs> because you got to get approval for somebody instead of going ahead and taking care of the problem. But, um, but yeah, she, she has not had a real history of being ill until she uh, got the cancer. So, okay. well, there's a few things, a couple things I want to get into. One is you would want to make sure that anything that's in the house isn't making her sick. And, um, but it could be the house, you know, that makes yeah. things that sick house or sick building syndrome, uh, mold and water, ground, radon. There's all kinds of things like that. Um, so, but as far as seeing the creatures, we were thinking, um, I know when you came to me, you were talking about the scrabblies, but they really just kind of hang around. They um, just kind of, they don't like go running. Yeah, like, well, that's what I said, you know, because, and I, I, the only thing I could call it to you was scrap is, and you would understand what I was trying to say. But yeah, these, these are very, very mobile and evidently will even uh, follow the dog. It's <laughs> what she says, mm -hmm. which makes me kind of even go, if she's looking at the dog and she's got her focus in that direction, then perhaps she, again, is kind of manifesting her own fear into a, a dark mass, because I've, I've seen that happen before where, uh, you know, I, I've heard many, many times where like a, a, a teenage girl can um, cause all kinds of havoc in some homes uh, because of the hormonal changes. Guys are, do it as well. But I hear more about women or young girls doing it as opposed poldergeist, to poldergeist, right? Ex That's when exactly. They start you have a poldergeist in their house. Yes, and and when things start going moving everywhere, which is like, hi, is it Lisa or Lisa? Yeah. Lisa, Lisa, yeah, Lisa, yeah, Lisa. Hi, yeah. well, hello, Vicky. Hi, Dolores. Oh, hi, Carlos. Hi. Nice to see you, Carlos. But yeah, so she, I'm I'm thinking that. She is actually, it may actually be something, but I don't get that sense of any evil or anything associated with any of this. I really think it's more of a manifestation of her fear. Um, okay. And th th to me, so if you've got any insight in that, that would be great because it's something I think that a lot of people have had had happen. You know, I've, I've had many people who say that, uh, I was talking about the teenage girls who have said that, um, when there's illness in a home and there's the stress of the illness, and especially if they have like teenagers or young people in the house, even, even somebody that might be 10 or 11 years old, sometimes even in that occasion, um, those people create a stress with the children, then the children, you know, don't know where to put that energy. And so they outward do it. And so that's where the poltergeist activity and some of that, um, psychokinesis stuff goes on where things go missing or things go moving all over the place. So. Hey, Tom. Um, Londie, this is how I feel. Okay. If she's got something that's manifested that she sees it and it's running, 
Yeah. A lot of times with the kinesis and stuff, you're going to see something float across the room, you know, that type of thing, right. like right. wrapping and this, that, and the other. Yet she's seen something dart around. So the Scrabblies, as we have in our book, and we talk about this hanging dark energy, and um, Amy on the Dead Files first, you know, described that, and and that was amazing because I go, I know what that is. Yeah. Um, but you, you know, once they kind of graduate to something bigger, then you have a Gumby that's usually child size, and that can get around, and they can stay benign for a long time. But if the grief or the illness or the stress or sadness comes in or fears gets bigger, then they're going to grow with it okay. or they'll bring in another one. Um, now, now, I believe that people don't make those, that there's something that we're going to call being conjured. So we're opening a portal and we're bringing some you know, dark matter in that can form. And so at this point, I wouldn't worry, but I'd want to banish it out. It right. doesn't hurt for her to get her house cleared and to have somebody to come in and check for portals. But you did go around the house and you felt okay about it? It was okay. And and she does uh, sage. So um, I that makes me even more suspicious of what why that would be staying in her home the way that it does well sage can dispel uh the dark matter but it's not going to close a portal right sure so um if the things can just retreat back and i've gone into houses where the portals open and and we get the stuff in there and then it needs to be closed and um so i really kind of it doesn't hurt for her to have a group go in, maybe a little paranormal investigation, and then go searching good medium, search for a portal, and then make sure everything's put and sealed and yeah. gone. Um, but I don't believe that it's something that, you know, she, since she sees it, I'm going to, I, my feeling, and I don't know, Andy, how you feel. I feel that this isn't something that she's conjured, you know, not conjured, but she's, you know, um, done on her own. You know, she can make things move and, and make knocks and all of that, but I think it's something else. What do you think, Andy? Um, I, I almost feel like it could be a combination. Um, uh, it, what it feels like to me is like the portals were already open in there. And then maybe the timing of her um, as a teenager um, and whatever it's called, her hormones are changing. It probably could have helped create those scrabblies and other, other things too. Okay. okay. Yeah, um, I, I, I differ a little bit on that. But and if she is sensitive, then she's going to see things. Yeah. And, um, and I think, I think she really is very sensitive, I believe. So. Mm -hmm. so I just think she, she's seen something that's running around the house and it's kept small because of, you know, and, and it's not going to hurt anything because she's saging. But, you know, her energy is going towards healing. And true, so it's true. hard to be at full power, guys, when you've got cancer uh, uh, and it's come back and the stress and all of that. If she has kinesis ab ability, then that's going to go a little wild in addition yeah, yeah. to um, that. And then she's trying to sage and her body's trying to heal. It's really hard when you have your body immune system is working towards healing you. And then it's got to go do other things, you know, your worry and your anxiety and your actual cancer. So and any toxic stuff put in your body through treatment. So um, she really, I feel like, needs to jump on this. And, you know, I'm sure if she's local that the dead talk can go in and um, do this for her and just check and make sure nothing's open. And then from there she can, you know she'll have okay now i know what i need to do and try to do that do we have extra people in oh wendy mm -hmm. hi i'll see you later 
So, uh, so it's so it's very, very interesting But I would say uh, first to have it really, uh, I'm not worried because you've looked, but I feel like they need to be taken care of because um, when you have it dark shadows or if you have the scrabbly stuff, there's the low energy and also the energy that pulls things down and it's sad and negative. So she needs to not have that going and trying to work you know that's a little against her when she's trying to heal so yeah, we need cool. to to really get her to where she has a real safe house and she can go in and get healed absolutely i i tried, I tried to, to kill her, kill her that here itself, itself because, 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 oh i got oh, so much, so much. Um, um the, the oh, I, I, yeah there's, yeah, there's, there's back. feedback I'm trying to, to uh, plug into my audio and it's not working. It was like every time I said a word, it was. Uh, what do you hear back? It must be must yours. Be yours. So. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and go out. You guys have the show. I'll be in the <laughs> lobby and I'll switch my audio, okay? Oh, sure. Oh, sure. I love this. I love every single time we have a show, we have something happen. <laughs> All right. Good meet together, Debbie. We always do this. Together, we always do this. Well, here, let me try if I can see if I can do this. I'll bet you can. I'll bet you can. No. No, it won't. Okay. No, okay. it won't. I'll be back. <laughs> that was a very poor Arnold Schwarzenegger, but <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, uh. So anyway, um, I think... I, I, one of the things I tried to, to tell her uh, specifically was when there's an illness as severe as what hers has been and, and a recurring one, unfortunately for her, then the fear factor gets exponentially multiplied, of course. And so that makes it even worse because she's feeling like she's at the edge of possibly passing away, you know? And so mm. it's, it's like, she's living on the edge of where the next realm is at. And that's the other thing that I kind of wondered about is, is there a possibility that maybe she really is, you know, seeing something because of almost, you know, crossing two worlds at the same time. It's not that she's right. about to die or anything like that, but I mean, because of, of where her, her body and her mind is, perhaps she's basically kind of living in both. I don't know. It's really yeah, strange. It does. I mean, I could see that. I could see that happening. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's a little frightening. I I can't even imagine having to go through it once, but to go through it at least twice is or three times is oh, I can't even imagine. So anyway, um, and so what else have you been doing there, Andy? Well, let's just keep this going. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, just keeping busy, and um, that's really about about it. Enjoying this nice weather. Is it beautiful yeah. there too? Yeah, it's like in mid seventies here in Montana. So, and and for those of you who are watching at home, that's what you do is talk weather when you don't know exactly what to say next. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll we'll catch up here in a second. Um, I would. I oh, maybe she's about to come. There she is. We missed not you. working. It's not working. Oh crap. Oh, yeah. I don't know why it's not. Usually I don't have to use it, but say something, guys. Testing one, two. Hello. Hello. Okay. You're here. I'm the craziest. It's not. Okay. Now I'm changing. Now say something. All right. Hello, Debbie. Hi. How are you? Now I don't hear you at all. Oh, well then, Okay. <laughs> Go on, Actually, go on. You're the, the fortunate time. one here. <laughs> the rest of them are just fine. Well, I can go ahead with the sponsors. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, so uh, tonight's sponsors is brought to you and me and all of you out there uh, by paparazziaccessories.com. And I'll, I have the link in the description. But this is a really wonderful website. They have no catalogs. It's just fun, fashionable $5 accessories by Stacy Carr. Uh, 
and here I'll post her. Um, this is her address that I'm showing on the screen, and you do need the one eight seven two one eight because that, that is her. Um, it's like her page uh, with that. So, and then our second sponsor uh, brought to you tonight is Checkered Lily Apothecary by Kimberly Boshu. And she's got Curious Beauty Bath and Body Products. Uh, you you want to check out her site as well. I will get that posted here. And Debbie was saying that she's got a new unicorn line that's out. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Uh, so check, check that out. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. I don't know. I put set it to headset and then I can't hear in it. So um, I'm sorry. I'm, well, I'm sorry if you're going to get feedback. Well, Lonnie, now I, I just talked to my hear. headphones back from you now. <laughs> I thought I gave them. Are these yours? <laughs> you have a pair of my, you have my headphones. I have your head. I thought, honest to God, I thought, okay, well then I'll bring these back to you. Cause yeah. I was wondering where they came from. All right. Yay. Well, either that or you come <laughs> on over and we'll have to do a show from here. I'll do it. Oh, gosh, I'll do it. I love your place. Oh, thank you. Okay. Okay. So we do have some new sponsors that will be coming up. Also, Brave Warrior that does logos, um, does mine. There's behind me. So um, anyway, let's let's get back into this um, uh, talking about all of this i think it's really interesting that she's got something running around in her house um, definitely we can help but i would like to talk about um telekinesis or psychokinesis right now i mean do you guys ever feel like have you ever seen anything fly around you or do you ever feel like you had superpowers oh i wish <laughs> um, you do your medium <laughs> I haven't ever had that experience where I've seen things flying around. However, when I was little, I used to practice because my favorite show was my favorite Martian. And so I would try telekinesis all the time. <laughs> Never worked. I kept trying. I'm still trying today, in fact. So. Oh, uh, remember he would use his finger. Mm -hmm. uh, the uncle, he would use his finger and then the antennas Martin would come up. Yeah. Un uncle yeah. Martin. <laughs> right. Uncle Martin. Um, Andy, what about you? Have you ever seen anything move? Or? Um, really, the only thing was my necklace from that spirit, um, that little boy spirit. I just watched him flip it up on my, on, on my chest. But I haven't, I don't think I've, I can't think of anything at the top of my head, but I'm sure I've seen something. Uh, but it's no, it's not normal for me to see things flying across, and um, <laughs> unlike you in your living room, <laughs> yeah, it's normal for me and my kitchen. <laughs> and, I was with uh, Kim, my niece, at her house. Well, I used to walk around in banks of lights, you know, in the grocery stores. The aisle I would be on as I walk, they're blinking. And then they'd stop and I'd go up the other aisle and they'd blink. And it was a natural thing in all the bathrooms and everything for lights to blink. That was one of the things. And I was at her house and the lights started blinking. And she said, hey, well, I want to see if, you know, uh, grandma is here, which would be my mom. And she had tea and there was a tea bag sitting there. And the string of, well, she asked, you know, if you're here, blink the lights. Of course, the lights blink. But as we were talking, the string of the tea bag just came all the way up and lifted straight up in the air. That's it amazing. Twice. It moved twice that time. So she knew that my mom was there and communicated that way. When you're communicating with lights and stuff, you're really kind of just getting yes, no type of communication going on. Not like now they have the Ovilus app and all kinds of ways to communicate. Um, in my home, I've had the remote float across the room and I've had um, things like the cracker box, you know, um, you know, starting to go like this and then really fast. And I just sat laughing watching it. 
<laughs> and um, so, yeah, things like that. The big raps, the big thuds. And a lot of it was being very, very annoying to get woke up at 3 a.m. So I needed to stop that. And that's when I warded my house uh, with the energy and, and stopped it because it was just like, you know, I needed to sleep. So a lot of uh, paranormal activity, yet I know it didn't come from me. I know I didn't, you know, sit there thinking, remote move <laughs> or, or che you right. know, cheese it box go like that or the cheese it box, you know. So I know that it was spirit, spirit doing it. Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you when I was young, I, you know, we were into all of this when I grew up. And um, my great aunt cooked at a spiritualist camp and my mother took over that. So, you know, we knew about this kind of stuff, but I always thought everybody had a force field around them. I, you know, because I, it was probably a good two feet out from my arm and I could feel it solid all the way down. So I could feel it all around me. So I thought that was a normal thing. But outside of feeling like a power of that, um, my special powers were I was lucky and I always knew what was going to happen. I could tell somebody, oh, you better not do that. You know, I could say I told you so if I wanted to all the time. <laughs> but I, you know, I wasn't making anything fly through the room or do anything crazy like that. Wendy said, I've had a wooden drawer pull out in the middle of the night. There's no metal rolling mechanism. It's all wood and heavy as it was full of books and junk. Well, of course, you've, you've got an entity in there that's um, manipulating things. I think a lot of people experience that stuff. And, um, oh, you know, doors opening and cupboard doors opening and all of that kind of stuff. Um, even sometimes the manipulation of the uh, doorknobs, which I thought maybe something was trying to get into my uh, bathroom one night when I discovered it was the six-year-old <laughs> so, trying to get in there. <laughs> And so, you know, you have to be on guard in your life. You're wondering to see if, if, uh, oh, hey, that's happening. And then you've got to dispel it. You have to be a skeptic, you guys. You can't just, you can't be gullible and think that everything that comes in is going to be paranormal. And, and, and this is the one wonderful thing about what we do is that we make sure that we check on that and that. And that what we're doing is um, uh, has a reason that it's making a noise or whatever. Or, hey, we can say that's paranormal. Do I see Jackie? I see Jackie. Hey. No? She's on no. the list. No. Well, she says there's a heart. <laughs> is that Jackie? I'm not really sure. So, it is. Hopefully yeah. she'll be here soon. You know, yes. you, you were talking about um, seeing the lights blink, and I'd forgotten all about that whenever, I mean, I've had that several times happen to me, and I, and or to make them blink is always a fun thing, too, you know, so, I mean. Oh, yeah. That's, well, the oh. Cr crazy thing that Lena did was that we were out at that memorial, and she made the um, frogs chirp. Yeah. Or whatever they do. <laughs> It's like if you're here, you know, make the the frog stop, and all of a sudden it was dead silence, and I was like, "How do you do that?" He said, "Okay, so you're here, so have them talk now or make noise." And then, oh, we were flooded with noise, and so we could do yes, no that way. But that was that was crazy. Vicky had a comment, uh, Andy, if you could bring it back up, I'd kind of yeah. like to see. Oh, yeah. Your shoes moved in different places. And also, Vicki, your um, pendulum moved. She keeps it um, She keeps it um, horizontal on a shelf. And she took a picture because one day it was spilling over this way, oh. vertical. So she's like, you know, how'd that happen? So that was uh, um, something. Yeah, or you know what? They take things and they move them around. So this is spirit doing that. It's not us yet i really feel hi jackie hi let's say congratulations to jackie she's got a great promotion. thank Yay. you she got a promotion oh well, i'm not surprised yeah <laughs> it's like office manager Psychic, you know right? 
Yeah, yeah, I'm the um, office manager now of my store. So, congratulations! Yay. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Thank so, you. Um, um, we were just talking about things moving in the house, houses, mm -hmm. and and noises and seeing things. Oh, you know, um, I see like um, you guys probably have seen this where something you see something like run, like if it run at supersonic speed, it would run by. So at see maybe at the corner of your eye something go and you go wow. So maybe a really fast kind of entity or spirit or something running. Um, in my house, of course, we see spirit and people come over and they see spirit. I saw a guy in spirit, you know, ride in on a motorcycle and straight <laughs> up to me when I was doing a reading for somebody. <laughs> was it a Harley or? <laughs> yeah, um, it, he was dressed at Londie in um, 1950s uh, clothing and the haircut and everything uh, kind of greased back the whole nine yards when um uh, when I connected it to the client and I said, so I have this guy and he's 1950s and he's on a motorcycle, the leather jacket and everything, the hair, everything. Then she showed me a picture and said, is this him? And I'm going, yeah. And she, and she goes, so that's my brother. And I said, he wouldn't be old enough to live in the 1950s at that age. There's no way. And she said, no, he had an infinity for the 1950s. So he dressed that way anyway, because he thought it was really cool. And then she said the significance of the motorcycle was that he went out for a ride and he was killed on his motorcycle. Oh. And I said, well, he's fine. He just wrote it in. <laughs> he just wrote it through my living room. He didn't give it up in the afterlife then. Is that what you're saying? No. I, you know, they have to bring things in like that to give validation. Absolutely. So I'm saying he's not on a motorcycle. He just rode in. He's got the jacket. He's got the hair, 1950s. And then she knew it was her brother. So they, they just give you those things to, uh, to you know, give validation because we, that's what we're all about is that we want our clients to know. Um, Wendy says, I love how Debbie described my grandfather. He doesn't look like you. I, Wendy was here at my house and we were, had a bunch of people here. And I said, this guy doesn't look like you at all. And I said how tall he was. And he was very, very, very light skinned. And uh, Wendy didn't, I say, he had a set of golf clubs or something, or he said, say golf. And, um, and I couldn't understand because, you know, you try to connect a relative, you know, usually you want to connect a relative and, and Wendy's a little bit more olive skin. And I'm like, it doesn't look like you. And um, it was um, that they weren't blood related. So that's, that's amazing. but yeah, I, I, if it was Wendy with the golf, um, that was their code word or whatever. So, <laughs> yeah, she asked him to tell me golf and I'm looking at her. I'm saying, I, I get golf. I got a golf club. I get golf in, in that. There was the validation that it was wow. grandfather, right? So amazing. It's so much fun to do readings, isn't it? Yes. Really yeah. Is. I love, I love it. I love when we could tell people golf or the one guy that I kept um, saying uh, dog, <laughs> like I was a crazy person, dog, 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 because I did a past <laughs> life, crazy stuff. We're going to do a past lives one, one, one show. So going back into the past life and talking to him sat next to me when he was in a past life. And kept getting dog, dog, dog. And then he told everybody that he told the other side that if somebody caught in his face and said the word dog, he could make a major decision in his life that night. And so here I was just looking right at him going dog, 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 thinking I'm never going to do another past life again because this cannot be validated. And yet, <laughs> amazingly, the dog did it. That was like, I literally was like off my chair. I was like, <laughs> that was amazing. So let's see, what do we have here? Uh, Andy, can you read that? Yeah, it looks like Lisa is saying, I seen my son and my brother-in-law at my brother-in-law's funeral. They were standing at the end of the casket looking at all of us. I had a similar... Right thing happened to me at one of the funerals of uh, 
one of my relatives, and it was an uncle who had passed away. And not too long after that, one of his sons did. And during the service, all of a sudden, it was like, (laughs) I don't know if it was an impression or just exactly what happened, but it was like they were leaning on a banister looking over is the, what, what came to me. And it was just the funniest thing ever. And I'm like giggling and <laughs> feeling terrible for giggling during the, to the funeral. But, but I'm like, well, at least they got it together, you know, but, but that was, well, I have one too. Okay. So I didn't experience this because I was in a high chair facing the dinner table, but my, my parents and my grandparents, and then, five of us kids were at this grandma's big table having dinner and my grandfather's father, and it wasn't related to him, blood related, but his father had passed. And so they said that we were all eating dinner and my grandparents looked up and right past me, there is a hallway, a door or two that goes into a hallway. And there he was standing there smiling and just looking at everybody at the table. And then he walked down the hallway and disappeared. And it was the neat thing is it wasn't like one person saw it. It was multiple people saw him in the hallway. But she she had a really scary house. I got to tell you this. I didn't like the house. It had really bad vibes. I mean is it okay that, if I answer Brittany's question? Because she's asking about who's with her, and I just got um sir, told. Can you bring up the question? I didn't get to see it. Okay. She says, can you please tell me who's with me? And she's asked like three times. So I, and finally, it was like, because I was like, well, could it be a, a grandma or something? And no, it's a friend who passed away. It seems to be a guy. I don't know if that means anything to you. And it's been within the last five years that this guy passed away. That's what I'm getting. So... If he's not a close friend, then he's a relative that maybe you haven't had a whole lot to do with before because it's (laughs) like they're not super, super close. It's not like feeling related. So that's just. Oh, okay. Well, that's great. Did anybody else have any questions out there? Hey, um, Uh, I kind of had one. It it wasn't posted, but I, I think there may be that some people may be confused on the term conjuring or like um, as mediums we I know in my experience I can ask them to come through but it doesn't mean that they will um, all the time and I think sometimes people think that that's what we're doing is conjuring and that's it's not so I don't know if you guys have any insight into that Conjuring to me is, uh, to me would be more of a, maybe a Wiccan type of term when you are casting a spell and you're trying to bring something through purposely. So we're trying to have, a, you know, at some, some people, uh, some kind of spirit come tr- through or entity come through, or maybe even people, you know, are summoning a demon. So uh, we're conjuring, we're trying to make something, um, say tangible, you know, materialized. So we're conjuring, meaning intent, maybe casting a spell with crystals and herbs or incense or however we do it, incantations. A lot of times when you're doing spell work and stuff, you are saying something over and over and over, which I'm going to be telling people on our Friday show. Everything I do is white, guys, white magic. <laughs> there's there's no gray for me and no dark. And um, and if you know what's good for you, you wouldn't cross that line. Um, when you do dark, then it can come back at you. OK, so we want to do try to do light. But conjuring to me is when you're purposely trying to materialize something, to bring something through, to make it solid, you know, type of thing. So, I mean, what do you guys have any feelings on it? Mm, I was so busy reading that I missed part of what you were saying. <laughs> oh, okay. So, um, sorry. so conjuring. Yeah. Um, I just think it's purposely bringing something through, and I think it takes a person to do that, to okay. um, bring something. Yeah. Oh, what I, what I started to say um, was 
in reference even to what we were discussing earlier is I have seen several TV shows where it seems like um, the power suggestion for the person watching some of these shows is so strong that they want to bring somebody or something because they want to have that experience. It's a very dangerous game, folks. You don't play with this at all. I mean, it's just, it's, it's one thing. I can't help it. I didn't ask for it. I've been this way since I was like five, four years old, something like that. But other people are seriously trying to get the abilities. Everybody has them to a certain degree, but whatever you do, don't just try to bring something through because you don't know what you're going to get. That's all I'm saying. And that's like even the Ouija board. Yeah. And I've got I've got two relatives that use it a lot and communicate and they're it, it, to them it's a tool and it's absolutely harmless. But in my experience that um, you, it opens a portal. Whenever you invite something in, even when I'm doing a spirit circle, I do a special thing where I invite the, you know, good uh, spirits um, of people that have passed and whatever that they are allowed to come in. But you better believe that I'm getting them out afterwards. And it takes some experience to know what you should do. Um, opening yourself up to this stuff can be harmful. And yes. we know that. So one of the things would be, you know, when people are practicing uh, witchcraft and um, and I'm absolutely okay with witchcraft, you guys, uh, as long as it's white. But um, whatever anybody wants to do, that's that's their thing. But if you go in just thinking it's fun, it's fun to go on a paranormal investigation. It's fun to get scared. It's fun to whatever. There's risk in all of this. There is but definitely risk. when you bring something and you're going to open a portal up, and then something, um, you know, comes through. And Vicky had like, uh, Vicky, you had some guy that, if I get it right, uh, Vicky, that there's somebody with a Z name and that's a demon or something that comes through now. That's what they were saying. She was saying on our, on our, talking about it on our website, I mean, our fan page, where it comes through at other people's, um, wherever they are doing a Ouija board. And that it's supposed to be a strong demon. So um, I don't know anything about that. But if Vicki, if you are still, you can type that to us. But, you know, you're opening a portal and you're letting things in. So shield and cleanse. Absolutely. Right. Protect, protect, protect. Absolutely. So, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mess with anything. That's for sure. Um, hey, um, you know, I know we only do readings on Fridays, but maybe if somebody wanted to had a question, we could do a question or two. That would be kind of fun since we have Londi this time. And yeah. I can get my cards out. But um, definitely um, that's where it's good to get a mentor. I think that if you're going to do anything that's uh, a Wiccan or anything like that, you know, get trained, you know. Um, it's not always clear in a book. You can't pick it up and then go and cast a spell and and didn't do your homework as to how do you protect yourself first? How do you make a sacred space and all of that? What do you do to um, make sure that you not let something in? And you'll know if something comes in because uh, number one, you'll see something, you'll feel so, something or, you know, a lot of times people will feel bad luck, bad luck comes in or illness or something like that yeah. so you got to make sure and those of you that are moms and stuff and you have kids you gotta be careful you know especially andy that um who was it that uh the little girl went and got a the ouija board app i never knew anything about the ouija board and really i didn't know that there was everything. one i should have known but gee whiz that's just dangerous yeah. Well, you got to know what your kids are doing and yeah. um, all the games and everything they have now. It makes it very attractive to uh, especially came out with Harry Potter and all of that, which I absolutely love all those shows. But um, the charm, you know, charmed and all of that. 
it was very attractive to fight demons or to have magic and to be psychic and all of that. But you really need to be taught. You know, you need to have a mentor would be really good. Yeah. And and they can help you um, uh, increase your psychic ability or your mediumship capabilities and all of that. Even um, Andy, you went to through a class on mediumship. Yeah, I did. Um, my my training was. I mean, to me, my personal opinion about certification is just saying like that you've actually gone through a process or a standard. Um, and I would recommend if you do do that, that it's it's a well-known kind of facility. Or if you, I get very kind of iffy on this because there's so many people out there that don't have the training um, to teach people. And here they are. <laughs> giving out giving, certificates. <laughs> yeah, printing them off or... Or their quality of work isn't that great. Yeah, um, well, this is how I believe. Up, so. Yeah, it's a great thing to, to put out there right now. I'll tell you how I feel about being a certified psychic. <laughs> I think that you're certified taking a course, somebody's course. But there's no set standards in the United States for this. So you're not certified as a psychic. If, if you could do that, then... Uh, your grandma could certify you. Anybody could certify you. There's no standards, you guys. You give me 50 so, bucks and I'll certify you too. <laughs> yeah, you're certified. They can be certified. Um, so there's, there's, this is how, I'll, my opinion is if you take a course, then you get a certificate of course completion. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that should stand there. You have that, but it can be by anyone. You can, so you could go to a, a, three hour course and get a certificate. You could go six weeks and get a certificate. So there's a there's no standard here of hours or what or people can make it up. So but mm -hmm. so you can go and get certified that you went through this course. I think that's a good thing. You know, I feel like it's okay. Um, but you cannot be certified as a psychic. Okay. You cannot be certified as a medium. Don't you find uh, that the best um way to to be certified is when you get feedback from people who you've given the readings to and, yeah the validation yeah. of what you've said to them is better than a certificate yeah. to me because yeah i can hang sure. it on my wall but it's not the same thing as somebody going you know what you were right about so and so and i was like oh really i <laughs> i do stuff just for the fun of it on a, a couple of the facebook uh pages that i belong to because uh, i like to keep my hand in in trying it in I just joined one here this last week and you have to put that you are an un what is it unapproved reader you oh yeah it, yeah so I'm like Don't okay they can approve you yeah but they I'm can like, approve you? I guess they can but I'm like how are you gonna uh, say that I am really a psychic. I mean, I can, I can, I mean, the only way to do it is to get in there and go, okay, I'm an unapproved reader. And here's what I think, because they've got all these people that are approved. And I'm like, how did you get approved? And, and they're, so they're they, approved it, because they did a reading for that person and the person felt it was validated. That's okay. why they'll do a reading for three of the admins or something like that. Well, so I, that's I, okay. It's yeah, okay. I, I got um, the first three that I tried this. The, the last one was back uh, yesterday, I guess it was. And I was right on him. And I was like, yay. You know, at least it's in print that I did something that was right. But it's <laughs> just not the same, you know, so. No. <laughs> you know, I'm... Um, I think being certified is kind of a more newer thing anyway. And, you know, you have to go that the the old psychics like me and stuff are pretty darn good. Yet, you know, we don't, we're not going to get a certification or anything. Mm -hmm. It's all about uh, a verbal uh, referral from someone who said, I got a great reading from them or reputation and reviews. So mm -hmm. let's go R and R reputation and reviews. There you go. There's a person you want to go spend your money at well, or go to yeah. whatever the deal is. And Absolutely. Thanks, to, thanks to you and Andy, I have one of the best friends I've, I've ever had in Tom Zawalski, who's here, which is awesome. He's uh, he's he's very, very sweet to me. And and we talk a lot. Shh. 
Um, Andy, you got your, do you have your psychic life uh, mug? Oh, I do. Yeah. I got a new mug. Oh, nice. There's that. I I saw yours. Yeah, yours yours is hilarious. (laughs) There's a chance this could be Jen. (laughs) No, I, you know, somebody said margarita was better and I went, Really, if it was going to be something in that genre, it would be because I don't drink, but I just thought it was hilarious (laughs) because you have those days. You have those days where, you know, uh, yeah, you know, Lisa, by the way, yeah, Lisa, by the way, you were asking earlier if um, your is it your granddaughter? Did you say that maybe seeing um, your son? And I do believe that that is exactly what's going on. Um, I think there's actually someone who comes with him, however, that, that might be a woman. Um, so if she actually all of a sudden goes, huh? Yeah. Do you know if it's, yeah, that my granddaughter keeps seeing. Yeah. So that's, that's basically, I, I keep getting that there's two people um, that she's been seeing. I think she talks about one of them. The other one makes her a little bit nervous. I think it's because she, she looks a little strict is what I'm getting. Um, (laughs) (laughs) And it may be just enough to intimidate her just a little bit, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's exactly what's going on. So I'm glad you realized that. Wow. That's really hard when um, we get clients that come and, you know, they've got their children that are seeing things and it's really, really hard when they're, uh, you know, afraid. And so um, uh, you can either, you know, try to protect them. But when they're sensitive like that, you've got to work with them and um, make sure everything's good energy around them. But you get, you have to work with them. So that the the worst thing is when the people uh, in so many mediums have grown up with the parents that said, you didn't see anything. Yeah, (laughs) you didn't see a thing. And that's what I just started to say is the fact that um, kids are, they don't have any mufflers, you know, because they, they basically, what they see, they just talk about regardless of what it is. Um, so you can pretty well trust that if they're telling you that they're seeing something, that they're really seeing something. That's the first thing. And believability is so important to a child at that age. Validation regardless is, is even if you don't believe specifically that they might be seeing something, validate that child anyway, because it, I'll tell you what, if they are seeing something, it can go against their psyche so bad that it can haunt them the rest of their life. I know for a fact. So, <laughs> Just so. Oh. so that was a personal thing, wasn't it? <laughs> Did you see how vehemently that came out? It didn't mean to. Yeah, but it's- <laughs> I guess I was lucky um, when I was uh, growing up that we were so open. We we would read this uh, magazine. It was a little magazine called Fate that would have all the weird stories and um, all that in it. And we just, my family just ate it up. Though we had, we had a lot of paranormal things happen in, in our homes we were in and we saw ghosts and all of that stuff. But um, yet I'm the only one who came out as psychic, you know, and, and doing the readings and all of that. So that is strange to me. And then when I met some of my Native American family, which one of them, Dolores, is on there now, um, then I one of the first question, I think the first question I said, is there any healers or psychics in the family? Because I don't know where this came from. And then, um, yes, indeed, there were shamans and healers and all of that. So that that connected me a little bit more but it's it's something to be in a family that is open to all of this stuff mm-hmm. and you know and you know that in all kinds of different ways open to all kinds of things um it isn't a it's not a secret that my sister is gay and she absolutely that was one thing she kept secret but it was so great when she did open up to that um but my family was really great um for me in in my gift that it it wasn't something that they wanted to suppress or not let anybody know um 
which was good. So anyway, we're coming up on time. What did it say? Brittany says my house burned down after. After she saw the shadow. But I'll tell you what. uh, What was the shadow? She had she seen had shadow in shadow the house that she used to live, used in. To live in. But, but the but thing that I'm getting is, is, is she's thinking that the shadow caused the fire. And what I'm thinking is that the shadow was actually trying to warn you. It was like a little warning as opposed to it being something that was malevolent. Um, it was somebody that was actually trying to protect you. And the message didn't get through to you like what it, what they were hoping that it would. So which they feel terrible about, by the way. So, Well, there's more than one shadow. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. If you, if you ever have a bad feeling anywhere, guys, um, that's when, okay, so your psychic um, alarm down here in the stomach, if you have something go and you go, oh, I don't, feel, you know, people go, I just don't like the vibes or I just don't, I feel a little funny or something. That's your psychic alarm. And I get it right here in the stomach. And I know there's danger. And um, and it's always right. So develop that. Know that something's going on. So if you're in a house and you have an uneasy feeling, that's the time to cleanse it. That's the time to find out its history. That's the time to make sure we got no portals or anything going on there. So you need to, to have good energy and feel really good in your house. And, and now I ward mine extra, extra. And so when people come in, they're just, they can instantly feel it, but it's warded from the sidewalk. And then we're going through a front yard and into the house, backyard and around it, the top of it and underneath. So we've got like a big bubble that we <laughs> live in good energy. So you know, you have to put a little time into that and you have to keep up good energy. And if you need to know about that, just private message me Um, because it's important for us to feel safe and wonderful. And I think that makes us more healthy. So Brittany says, I know, but I seen my whole family in a dream tell me to wake up because my house was burned. So Brittany, you were in the house when it went on fire. Did they have a reason that it, that it started? Uh, the fire was it electrical or anything like that? You can write to us if you if you can do that. That can you imagine? That's so scary. Now yeah. I get I get woke up, but not for an emergency like that. So mm-hmm. one day I wanted to get up early, and I was setting the alarm, and I told the I just said it out loud. I'm going to set it for 7:30, but I in my head I set it for 7:40 because I thought oh, I'll sleep 10 more minutes. And I put it down. And in the morning, they know not to knock three times. I stopped that a long time ago. So in the morning, I got a very prim and proper four knocks. One, two, three, four. And I woke up and I could hear it knocking. And I went and I looked right at the clock and it was 730. And I go, oh, I forgot to tell you guys. I gave myself an extra 10 minutes. (laughs) So, (laughs) so, um, but I do naturally wake up at 3 a.m. Do you guys wake up oh, at yeah. midnight or 3 a.m.? Um, it used to be 3 a.m. all the time. And now then I think it's gone on some kind of a, a daylight savings time because it's a four. <laughs> so- yeah. <laughs> Somebody didn't get the memo. <laughs> Somebody didn't get the memo. Drives my husband crazy. Come back to bed. I'm like, if I could, I would. But it, no, it's not going to happen. Oh, well, we're just about out of time. Uh, did Brittany um, answer that last question? Yeah. Oh, okay. She said yes, and yeah. then she said with my son and my boyfriend. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So that meant there there was a reason for the fire. Then to me, it would be a um, a saving your life. To somebody yeah. Yeah. metaphysically, you got your life saved. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. 3 a.m. You guys, anybody else get up at 3 a.m. that's watching? It's just, you know, I always thought it was midnight. What was it on the old movies? It was always at the stroke of midnight, midnight right? Yeah. yeah. And then when Remember I started the- watching like Ghost Hunters, they said it was dead time at 3 a.m. And I was like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> so. <laughs> Brittany, three. I know it's three. I don't wake up so much, but lately, 
something's going on because I'm getting up at three and it's, it's, I know I need to reward my house. As I've said, just about every week, my husband picked up all the wards <laughs> that are supposed to be in the corners of the house and put them on the fireplace. <laughs> so I still, they're still there. And I, I do have to, to uh, have the time to go and re it does. It's a process you guys. And Carlos gets up at 3 a.m. So we should all be doing a show, you guys, no at 3 a.m. Okay, we, we have nothing else better to do. So. Yeah, we can have a <laughs> late nice night. <laughs> we could bring in a lot of psychics at that point. And it'd be like it'd 6 a.m. Like my, my time. time. <laughs> that's oh, well, that's perfect for you. <laughs> I forget the t time changes. So. Well, it's about time for us to go to the lobby, guys. Hey, I um, thank you so much Jackie, for inviting me. It's great. Well, hang on for a sec. We'll go to the lot lobby in a minute. Jackie, are you going to get cake or do something special? I going don't, out to dinner tomorrow? I don't know yet. I had the person that used to be the office manager who's now like an assistant manager tell me that she might take me out tomorrow. I'm not nice. sure yet, though. I haven't told. I mean, I told all our viewers. Everybody but, knows now. But yeah, now everybody, everybody knows. knows. <laughs> everybody. But who knows? You know, it's amazing. Yeah. Within about an hour after we close, we'll have almost 200 people that have viewed it, uh, <laughs> the shows. So it's amazing. Yeah. But so then you'll have a couple hundred people maybe that, that, know. Know. that you don't know that know. <laughs> uh, and everybody so call our boss. <laughs> yeah, wow. that's really great news Thank so you. and Londi oh you are an amazing medium and, yeah, and if you that you guys probably some of you know some of you don't know amazing singer and entertainer and um we're just really blessed that you can um just jump on and in and, and assimilate right into our show and help us Thank out you. Oh, it's appreciate fun. I love you. And I look forward to going up to LA to the cemetery that you've been at and doing an investigation in a couple of weeks. Awesome. Oh, fun. Columbo yeah. is there. Andy, fly over. We're going to be going. <laughs> We're going to go over. up to uh, Patty Page, was there. That has to be the most amazing headstone. I saw the picture that Londi put that I've ever seen. Yeah. It's that wasn't beautiful. there, though. You know where that is? That one. Oh, where's that? That's over here by Poway. It's actually. I'll have to get Larry to tell you where the directions are to get to the cemetery because it's like about Patty Page in Poway. Actually, close, very close. It's it's not in Poway, but it's just outside, and it's like, are you kidding me? I'm like walked up, and I'm like, Patty Page. Oh, and no idea. Uh, okay, so we're going to see Marilyn Monroe then. Yes, we're going to see Marilyn Monroe okay. and. Um, Hugh Hefner is there, of course. I was just yeah. going to say that. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I don't know how much it paid, but at least leaping with Marilyn. That's all <laughs> and but, people kiss it. I'm not kissing. I her. know. I was like, no, I don't think. <laughs> no, that's nasty. That's you like got going hand to, sanitizer. <laughs> oh, you know what? What's really weird is to go to the Valentino one up in, in LA where he's, where he's uh, interred. And that is bizarre because you know how many people have been kissing on that over the years? Oh, who is lot. that? Who is that? Yeah. Little Valentino. Oh, Valentino. My God. Uh, oh, yeah. my gosh. It's crazy. Lipstick well, everywhere. Crazy. It's worse than Marilyn's. And Did he ever figure out who the, wasn't the lady that brought the roses to him every year or something? Yes, and she evidently passed away because the uh, the roses stopped coming. Kind of the lady in black or whatever. I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Before my time, you guys. <laughs> don't, don't think it I, we, I had one of the most amazing experiences there. Uh, I'll have to tell you about it sometime. Oh, darn it. <laughs> you can't leave us. Until Friday. Until <laughs> next time. Dang. Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger. You have to come back. <laughs> okay, somebody has to write it down. Where's our secretary? <laughs> We're accepting applications for interns. <laughs> yeah. We all need to And if you need a certificate, <laughs> I'm all I'm there. Certify you as an intern. I'll just write her up. When we went on, I only had one earring on, and uh, they're dragonflies, brand new earrings. 
And I'm looking here, looking for that. The audio goes. I mean, <laughs> I'm just, I'm like, and my hair all went this way. And I'm like, that's life with like, Debbie, folks. I'll tell you right now. That's just about basically <laughs> it. It isn't pretty. <laughs> and she says the same thing about me. It's like we and the two of us getting together. Oh Lord, have mercy. Move out of town. That's all I'm saying. It's just well, terrible. It, what's what's really neat is um, there's some people that uh, naturally can bond together and be psychic together. And Blondie is my person. And we get together and then I just say, you, you know, so you tell me and she'll tell me what I'm going to say. I mean, we, we get, did it. We did it today, didn't we? <laughs> it's just like- right on. It's crazy. Yeah, we did. And so sometimes you can go and people that, and I have a sister. So we've got two people in my life that I've tested. And um, my sister, we sat in a car and I go, so what am I thinking about? And, and she said, ice cream. I go, yeah. So what am I thinking about? So we went through 12 things, absolutely hundred percent right. And then I said, well, I'm going to switch the 13th thing to ice cream again. And I said, now what am I thinking about? She goes, ice cream. And I go, you're right. And scared her oh, to death. This was at Dorothy Jackie. She said, I don't <laughs> want to do it anymore. I don't want to do it anymore. And that was it. But- Mine's got to be my mom. Because without even saying anything, I'll be thinking of something. And she goes, you know what sounds good? We should have tacos for dinner tonight. And I'm like, get out of my head. <laughs> Wait a minute. She can probably say that every night and be right. <laughs> no, no. Hey, hey, just because I like tacos. <laughs> but no, or we'll say something like she goes, you know what I was thinking about the other day? I was thinking about A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And I'm like, I was just and it was memorizing so random, right? all of that. Yeah, yeah, it was just random. And I, yeah. do that, I do the same thing to her because she'll be like, get out of my head. Why? And I'm like, <laughs> I didn't know well, we were thinking about it. <laughs> it's really true that, you know, the thing is when you can do the telepathy telepathy thing, uh, my son Stephen could do it with to his friends. And I finally told him, I, you know, he got he lost some friends because they were afraid of him. And I said, you need to ask permission because then they play a game and he tell them every time everything that they were thinking. And I said, you need to really ask him permission, you you know, so you don't scare them. And I said, absolutely. You can never read my mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll tell you something funny yeah, that happened, happened to me um, actually yesterday. Um, I had gotten up and I was sitting there and getting, getting my hair combed and everything. And all of a sudden I started putting my hair up on top of my head. And I don't usually do that like what I did. And I fixed it like my mother's hair. And it was just, it was, it, and I was sitting here, I was laughing. I'm like, you look like your mom, only chubby. So, oh. <laughs> but, but here's, here was the kicker to it. And I'm sitting there, I'm going, something's wrong with her. Just, I, I know something's wrong. I, I had, and I thought, I'm going to ca- give her a call after a while. Well, before I had an opportunity to give her a call, my brother got a hold of me and told me that she had gotten into some poison ivy and he was trying to talk her into going to the hospital because he said he didn't, he didn't tell me how badly it was but he said her face is all swollen up on one side and she her one eye is closed and I was like holy crap so my sister sends me a picture of it today it's unbelievable (laughs) they had to take her to the hospital they're keeping her overnight and had to pump her full of steroids and things but then my I talked to my my daughter tonight and she's like I had the strangest thing mom yesterday I had the funniest dream about grandma and and I told her, I said, did you really? I said, what was, what was yours about? She, so she told me what it was. And she's like, I never dream about grandma. And I'm like, no, oh, really? So then I had to tell her that grandma was in the hospital. So I was like, oh, okay. So, I mean, it does run whenever you get the tele, you know, whatever. <laughs> Still have to go on. <laughs> yeah. And well, it just shows out at least one of your daughters is uh, a sensitive and he, she has yes. an ability. Yeah. So. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, you guys, it's time to go to the lobby before this gets too long and boring for people. <laughs> but us. All Thank right. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Stay Bye-bye. in the lobby. Bye.